Welcome, sir. Uh, what's what's your name? What name? What oh, name do you yeah, go um, by? Uh, my name is Stinky Ass. I was okay, just okay. here about getting a game put on your new system, the Game yeah. Boy Advance. Uh, Th- that sounds good. I, I work for a company called um, PP Interactive. I was just wondering if you could help me out. Sure, sure. Can you just tell us the concept of the game? We can't have anything that's like too adult for the system. You know what I mean? We are Nintendo after all. Uh, yeah, just give us a name and the concept. Oh, okay, so uh, in this game, you shoot chickens. Okay, and like, is there any like cool like spin on the gameplay? Anything neat to like add to the mechanics of this game by any chance at all? Well, yeah, here's here's the answer to that question. No. Okay, and what's the name of this game? Chicken Shoot. Holy shit. That's like th- the best idea I've ever heard in my entire life. The Game Boy Advance is a very fascinating handheld. Released in 2001, this successor to the Game Boy and Game Boy Color is amazing. It may not be as big of a success as the previous system or the following one, but it did do relatively well. Later in 2003, we would end up getting the GBA SP, which is my favorite way to play these games officially. Besides the DS, this has got to be my favorite Nintendo handheld due to just how experimental stuff seemed on it. It may have lacked an original Mario platformers, but then you also got fantastic games like Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Wario Land 4, Advanced Wars, and Metroid Fusion. I adore this system and its library, but at the same time, I tend to question that Nintendo seal of approval, especially since the library is full of a ton of weird shit too, which is what I would like to talk about today. Not the good type of weird shit though, the bad kind. The games that are just the definition of, huh? What? And last but not least, what the fuck? Yeah, sometimes I take a look at that Nintendo seal of approval and all I can truly think is that somebody at the approval board had the wrong type of brownies for dessert and that's how we ended up with games like Stuart Little 2, the video game. It is such a chaotic library that sometimes feels like you're walking in a minefield when looking for cool GBA games. Like, who in the world is itching to play Sitting Ducks? That's when I come in. I want to let you sit back while I show you some of the weirdest Game Boy Advance games I could find so I could either fascinate or shock you. Yeah, there's no in between here, so be warned, we are heading into the Seven Seas. Elf Bowling 1 and 2 is exactly what you would expect. What would happen if you took a Flash game and gave it a full console release? Well, here's the answer. A game that's not very good. Elf Bowling 1 is just bowling, who'd a thunk, but it just doesn't feel all that fun to play. Elf's Paradise is Shuffleboard, I think. They're, they're just both garbage as full release games, but they are a good distraction as Flash games, which is why I never got why you would put them on consoles other than to make a little bit of money. Also, did you know there was an Elf Bowling movie? They look like hairy monsters to me. Lex, what the dingle bobs are they? I and mean, what are you gonna do with them? Thaw them out! Unless you're a lunatic like me, just avoid this at all costs. Others are still inside. House of the Dead is perhaps one of the greatest series of light gun shooters ever made. Sega definitely knew what they were designing here, as shooting zombies is just so fun to do. There's even typing of the dead, and that is a blast as well to play as a way to test your typing skills. The voice acting may be a little jank, but it really adds to the charm of the experience and just makes the game so much fun to constantly go back to. So how do you drive a franchise like this forward? What could Sega do to really blow people away? Pinball Pinball of the Dead is a spin-off of House of the Dead, and man, this is an odd choice for Sega to make, but in a weird way, it does come together fairly solid. It is your standard-ass pinball game, yes. Does it have wonky physics? Yes. But it just works and turns into something that I didn't put down in five minutes. Something about being able to crush zombies with a pinball is just fun, and also you got a bonus with fun reaction-based minigames, Boss fights are here too, but to be honest, it's not much of a change, it's still just pinball. It may be a confusing idea, but it comes together fairly solidly and creates a game that is enjoyable, 
I just wouldn't sit down and play it for hours on end. There are plenty of kart racers on the GBA. Most well known out of all of them is of course Mario Kart Super Circuit. It is a really damn good kart racer for the system, but that isn't the only one. No, no. Nick and Cartoon Network both have kart racing games. Hell, even Digimon does. But looking at these games, I can't help but feel something is missing. They're all the same and need something to divide themselves from one another. They need to suck d Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway is literally a perfect example of how to not make a kart racer. The game starts with a pile of logos because I guess that many companies needed to be a part of this. Then afterwards, you get a language select screen, and then the second you hit that preferred language, you get some horrors beyond comprehension. This is one damn ugly looking game, and I'm not just talking the god awful chibi sprite art either. Once starting the game, you get a character select screen, including plenty of Shrek classics and some mystery ones too that I didn't end up unlocking. I could not not finish the game, but I'll explain why later. I chose the three little pigs as my main because I felt like it, and there's stats for each race or two that I really do not care about. The game gives you four locations with four tracks in each location. And let me ask you a question. When I start racing, what's the first thing you notice? Can't see it? Well, let's ask live action Radhead who played the game for 40 minutes how he feels. <laughs> this game is so choppy. If it looked like Mario Kart Super Circuit or even the damn Cartoon Network racing game, I would say it's just another mediocre kart racer. But for some reason, the game is the choppiest thing I've ever played, and having the roads be these patterns, they just really hurt to look at, and this sound is just a mix of high-pitched beeps and screeches. <laughs> It is ridiculous that I put myself through it, and I'm not even kidding when I say that I got sick after I was done with it. I got through the first two locations before just not being able to handle it. I could have played more, but I really did not want to sit through the rest of this. I'm sorry to all the diehard Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway fans. Fuck you. March of the Penguins is a great documentary about, well, Penguins being penguins. It's just so calming and so is the GBA game. The game isn't great, don't get me wrong, it's just inoffensive. It feels a lot like Lemmings with a goal of guiding penguins to the end of the stage, but it is of course far less fun than Lemmings. If this was a PC game, maybe it wouldn't be as bad with the cursor just being pretty awkward to control. It's just extremely boring to play and the music isn't great but I get a cozy feeling from it for some reason. It was definitely a great change of pace after ruining my eyes with the last game, but there isn't really much to talk about here. You just gotta keep the penguins alive and bring them to the end within a time limit. Each item is used to guide the penguins like paths and trampolines, and at the end of the day, just play lemmings, you'll have a far better time. I will give it one thing though, it really does make you feel like you're watching penguins. But the bonus points for being like the documentary, I guess. <laughs> to me, this has to be one of the more confusing releases on this list. Yes, more confusing than Pinball of the Dead. All I can really think to myself is purely just why. Why would someone make a GBA game based off of green eggs and ham? And why did my dumbass play it? This and the game after are the only ones I went into without much knowledge of, and for this one, I really wish I knew more. You may be expecting a mediocre 2D platformer, but no! They had to pick the worst choice ever! A Mario Party clone! And it is far from a solid Mario Party clone. There's not even cool characters. You just select a child and a hat. Each minigame is just super slow and boring, but also includes quotes from the original book, which just makes things faithful. So I guess it's a good adaptation of the source material. I wish I could just show you the control delay on these minigames. Controlling your character in these minigames feels like getting a root canal without numbing and then swishing your mouth with bleach. Not very good. And the board. 
do not get me started on the board. Okay, so basically you got a spinner, and whatever color you land on is the one you walk to. Then after each turn, you have to do a matching game every fucking time! It is actually torture, because when playing against a CPU, they almost always win, and in order to get the dog shit mini games, you have to win. The mini games are mainly, mainly, I can't even speak, I'm so mad, are mainly just stuff along the lines of, hey, here's a dog shit obstacle course. Go collect green eggs and ham. Your reward for playing this game is the amount of relief you get after shutting it off. This has to be one of the absolute worst GBA games I've ever played, and I can't even find any unintentionally funny things in it. It's just boring and not fun to play. Green eggs and ham for GBA is such a weird release, but far from a good one. So if I were you, I would avoid it at all costs. Please, save your sanity. <laughs> Urban Yeti is a game so weird that I legitimately struggled to explain my first impressions because I was just confused for the entire duration of what I played. This is one of the types of video games that researchers are going to study in a thousand years and think, people were weird back then. So instead of struggling to write about this game, I've put together a highlight of me playing it. Enjoy. Telegames. Okay, I gotta turn that down. Hold on. <laughs> Throughout time and around the world, the legend of the Yeti creature has been with us. No matter what you choose to call it, be it Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or Abominable Snowman, surely must have... Let me read it. But how was it? Let me read the text. <laughs> Is it possible that these creatures have been living among us for some time? Oh, oh no. If they live among us, is it not not... Let me read the text. Oh my god, he's, he's thinking about his girlfriend. The time has come to find out Urban Yeti. Find a suitable mate. Okay, so this... This game's about getting laid, oh, all right. Ah, ah. This is Oscar. <laughs> a female Yeti scream, and it's coming from the mainland. We've got to find a way over there before another Yeti does. Hurry, urban Yeti, the survival of a species is at stake. Okay. This game's like sickening to look at. <laughs> oh. Ah, hi, yeah, hi, yeah. Can I jump? Is there a jump button? There isn't. Okay. This music kind of goes hard, though, not gonna lie. Gotta go up here. Yep. You can't go there, Urban Yeti. It's a total, it's a toll bridge. I, the toll is $4. Looks like you need a job. <laughs> All right, let's go get a job. Oh, oh, wah, wah, wah. Oh. Hold on, do I gotta... I love beating up innocent civilians. It's like my favorite genre of game. Employment opportunity available. The city is looking for a soup kitchen manager. Must be willing to tolerate abuse and work just for tips. Apply within between the hours of 7.30 and 1930. Interviews start tomorrow. Where, where am I? Sorry, sir, we're not accepting appliance until tomorrow. Oh. How do I... Have to wait until tomorrow? I don't even know what I'm playing right now, to be honest. You can just dance. This is ridiculous. This And I love his dance solo. Oh. Okay, so that's the pause button. Take that, dog. Take that. Oh, it is tomorrow now. Yes! <laughs> Every day, surviving on good food and good times at the local soup kitchen. Okay. Surf customers. This is a big game. 
Grab tips before someone else steals them. Okay. You have two minutes. Two, two, oh, two minutes and 30 seconds. Can I not read? I guess I can't. Oh, he wants that. You have. Oh, shit. No, no, no. Take your food. 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 Okay, oh, that guy wants pizza. Burger, 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 take your burger. Is this what working at 7-Eleven is like? Do customers, like, actually hit you at restaurants if you don't serve them your food properly? Like, is this true? They don't just leave bad reviews, they, like, physically assault you. What? Oh, did I do it? Oh, no, I didn't. Credits too. So what do I need to pass again? I forgot. I love the dedicated screen button or like whatever other button you got. It's so awesome. Oh, the smell. It's unmistakable. I'm asking the Yeti. Could it be that your lady is here? Is where we we look for we in the city? Okay, so now we gotta find the female, I guess. Oh, me when the Yeti is urban. Is that the other Yeti? Yep. I did it. You may have defeated me for now, Urban Yeti, but meet me at the meet me at the Yeti Discuss Tournament and I'll whoop you again next time. Okay. Now where do I have to go? Where's my drink? It's freaking rat in a car. Ah. Pardon? I die? I just die. Okay, I'm getting way too sick. I need to turn this off. Oh. And that is every game on this list. I would say everything on here was pretty painful to play besides Pinball of the Dead and shockingly Urban Yeti to an extent. This game just kind of had me curious the whole time. The GBA is a system to be celebrated, whether it be the good games, the bad games, or even the just plain ugly games. Games are meant to be fun. Even if it's unintentionally fun due to being bad, you can still look at them with a smile on your face. Playing some of these games made me appreciate the good and even extremely okay games in the GBA library, and well, that makes me happy. Stuart Little the game could burn in hell.